Hi students, this animation and description would help you to learn physics even more easier and better. So please do watch it and enjoy learning physics. Heating effect of Joule's law. In a conductor, the free electrons are always at random motion, making collisions with ions or atoms of the conductor. When a voltage V is applied between the ends of the conductor, resulting in the flow of current I, the free electrons are accelerated. Hence, the electrons gain energy at the rate of Vi per second. The lattice ions or atoms receive this energy Vi from the colliding electrons in random bursts. This increase in energy is nothing but the thermal energy of the lattice. Thus, for a steady current I, the amount of heat produced in time T is shown as follows. The above relations are experimentally verified by Joule and are known as Joule's law of heating. By equation 2, Joule's law implies that the heat produced is directly proportional to the square of the current for a given R. It is directly proportional to the resistance R for a given I and directly proportional to the time of passage of current. Also by equation 3, the heat produced is inversely proportional to the resistance R for a given V. Verification of Joule's Law Joule's Law is verified using Joule's calorimeter. It consists of a resistance coil R enclosed inside a copper calorimeter. The ends of the coil are connected to two terminals fixed to the lid of the calorimeter. A stirrer and a thermometer T are inserted through two holes in the lid. Two-thirds of the volume of the calorimeter is filled with water. The calorimeter is enclosed in a wooden box to minimize the loss of heat. A battery B, T, a key, K, a rheostat, R, H, and an ammeter, A, are connected in series with the calorimeter. A voltmeter V is connected across the ends of the coil R. Law of Current The initial temperature of water is measured as theta 1. Let W be the heat capacity of the calorimeter and contents. Now a current of I1 is passed for a time of T, about 20 minutes. The final temperature, theta 2, after applying necessary correction, is noted. The quantity of the heat gained by calorimeter and the contents is calculated as H1 is equal to W into theta 2 minus theta 1. Water is then cooled to theta 1. The experiment is repeated by passing the currents I2, I3, etc through the same coil for the same interval of time T and the corresponding quantities of heat H2, H3, etc. are calculated. It is found that H1 by I1 square is equal to H2 by I2 square that is equal to H3 by I3 square that is H by I square is equal to a constant. H is proportional to I square. Hence the law of current is verified. Know about the law of resistance. The same amount of current I is passed for the same time T through different coils of resistances R1, R2, R3, etc. The corresponding quantities of heat gained H1 H2, H3, etc. are calculated. It is found that H1 by R1 is equal to H2 by R2. 
that is equal to h3 by r3. So, h by r is equal to a constant. h is proportional to r. Hence, the law of resistance is verified. Let us see the law of time. The same amount of current I is passed through the same resistance R for different intervals of time T1, T2, T3, etc. The corresponding quantities of heat gained H1, H2, H3, etc. are calculated. It is found that H1 by T1 is equal to H2 by T2. That is equal to H3 by T3. So, H by T is equal to a constant. That is, H directly proportional to T. Hence, the law of time is verified. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you.